what's up everyone, this is Comwalks, and welcome to another new video. And for today's video, I want to talk about my top 3 frames for beginners, and to use, and to acquire. These frames, I feel, are on this list because I think they're a good example of exercising combat mechanics early on Warframe, enough to find out what kind of player and playstyle you may prefer later as you progress. This is not a word for word guarantee, but merely an opinion, and don't forget, this is for beginners. So let's get to it. Rhino. Rhino can be obtained on the node Fossa on planet Venus. The boss is Jackal. You can also acquire his blueprint in the market for 35,000 credits. Rhino's passive. Heavy landing. When falling from a gradient of speed causes a 6 meter knockdown AoE, which also stacks damage with the heavy impact mod. This is also a great passive CC ability which requires no energy cost at all. Charge. Just as it says, Rhino will ram his target. Not my favorite ability, but it does have a combo counter which can be chained after every hit. Also, Rhino is immune to damage during the animation frames of charge. Iron Skin. What you'll be using a lot of the time, Rhino hardens his skin, insulating himself from all damage. The threshold of how much damage Iron Skin can take will be based on power strength. Roar. You and everyone nearby gets an attack boost. This is affected by power strength, range, and duration mods. Stomp. Rhino will stomp so hard, causing everything within range to submit to time stasis. This is great for CCing groups of enemies, or as a resort to stun and to escape a horde of enemies as well. So in short, Rhino will do amazing from beginning to end in most situations or even soloing. Not too ideal for spot missions though, he can get boring to some players, but in the end, is a solid frame. Give him a try! Oberon. You can get Oberon's parts through any dropped loot from Exmas units. Usually the fastest way to obtain his blueprints is doing a few dialect defense runs. It usually doesn't take long to get him. Oberon's passive, Beastmaster. Oberon's on with nature and gains the following perks. Allied pets receive a 25% health increase, 25% shield increase, and 75% armor. The player's pet receives one instant revive permission. This is kind of a side note, but really interesting. In Conclave, his passive changes. Oberon is immune to impairs instead. This is big because movement impairing in Conclave, if propped by an opposing player, guarantees death. This is great because having a passive ability which is immune to impairing increases the survivability of Oberon. Smite. It can hit multiple enemies, can also proc impact and radiation, and damage also scales to enemies level, which is great if you decide to rely on this ability in the long run. Hollow Ground. Hollow Ground can cover a lot of area, it can cause radiation proc, also heals affecting nearby players who are afflicted with status procs, including you. Think of it as casting Isuna and on you and your party members from the Final Fantasy series. Renewal heals all allies, increases bleed out time, and gives an armor buff when cast over hauled ground, affecting any squad members in it. Reckoning is a radial CC ability that can strip armor and cause proc radiation, and can cause vitality orbs to drop. Pro tip. Having 167% or more power strength can reduce armor stripping to 2 casts instead of 3 if you possess less than the amount of that power strength. So Oberon's kit is great for exercising some different playstyles of defensive healing or offensive CCing. There's a ton of creative synergy between his abilities, while a jack of all trades and a master of none, Oberon is great for players searching for a middle grounded frame. Let's get real here, everyone loves Obi for fashion frame right? Just kidding. Vault. Vault can be available through the beginning as one of the three starter frames. He can also be acquired through the clan dojo research and also for 60k conclave standing from Teshin, completely pre-built. Vault's passive. Static discharge. Traveling along the ground between Vault's attacks by either walking, running, or sliding will build up stack energy, adding bonus electricity damage towards Vault's next weapon attack or ability cast. For every 1 meter traveled, 5 points of electricity damage is added, accumulating to a maximum of 1000 bonus damage. Static Discharge is additive, so it can also combine with elemental mods on weapons as well. Shock. Launches a shocking projectile, it stuns and deals high damage to a single target and chains to nearby enemies. Speed. Volt energizes his body and nearby warframes, giving them increased speed and dexterity for a short amount of time. This affects reload time, attack speed, and movement speed. Electric Shield. Volt deploys an electric shield to cover any situation. can be picked up and carried, resulting in switching to your secondary weapon, but also can be switched to your melee weapon as well. Discharge. 
Paralyze nearby enemies with a damaging electric charge. This also shocks approaching enemies. So Vault is another great frame similar to Oberon, but focuses more on mobile buffs and mobile defensive gameplay. With Electric Shield being able to be stationary and picked up, it can serve a variety of defensive situations. And Speed being the amazing ability it is, it buffs several stats, so in its own right, it's amazing. And with this charts being buffed the last year, it is a great standalone CC ability. So there you go guys, those are my top 3 Warframes to acquire and to use in the beginning of Warframe. These frames are a great example of a little of every Warframe to follow in your arsenal as you progress. If you have trouble learning or understanding on how to mod Warframes and weapons, I have two videos here that are for beginners that are for the understanding and basics of modding. If you found this video to be helpful, please leave a comment, like, and subscribe as well. This will help me greatly in putting out more useful and entertaining content. Enjoy the rest of this fresh new year, Tenno.